Welcome to What is Zinc, the first installment in the lubrication fundamental series from Joe Gibbs Driven Racing Oil. I'm Lake Speed Jr., certified lubrication specialist and member of the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. Now what is zinc? How does it work? Well, zinc, also known as ZDDP, is a polar additive, so it's attracted to any steel surface. Under heat and load, the zinc additive reacts with the metal surface and forms a zinc phosphate anaware film. This film helps smooth out the peaks and valleys on the metal surface. No smooth piece of steel is actually smooth. There's always peaks and valleys. The zinc phosphate film also acts as a sacrificial barrier to prevent metal on metal contact under low speeds and high loads. Now, when speeds are high and loads are light, you don't need zinc because you're in full film lubrication. As the two surfaces pass by each other, a hydrodynamic wedge is formed. It's kind of like water skiing. As the boat speeds up, the skier rises up out of the water. In full film lubrication, the oil film completely separates the two surfaces. This produces low friction and low wear. As loads begin to increase, the hydrodynamic wedge begins to thin. As the opposing peaks begin to make contact, friction and wear begin to rise. We are now in mixed film lubrication. The oil film is still carrying some of the load, but now friction modifiers like moly and boron step in to lower friction and reduce wear. As loads continue to increase and as speeds decrease, the oil wedge is broken and we enter boundary lubrication. Friction and wear dramatically increase unless an additive boundary film is present. Remember, zinc needs heat and load to activate. So in boundary conditions, zinc reacts to create the sacrificial anti-wear film to protect the surfaces from rapid wear. In the boundary condition, protection is completely dependent upon the boundary additives like zinc. A great way to look at these three stages of lubrication is the Strybeck curve. It provides a graphical representation of all three conditions relative to friction and what is known as the ZNP factor. Don't worry, you don't have to do any math here. ZNP is an easy way of accounting for the relationship between the viscosity of the oil, the speed of the surfaces, and the loads encountered. The basic rule of thumb is high speeds and light loads allow you to use low viscosity oils and still operate in full film lubrication for reduced friction and efficiency. Conversely, you need higher viscosity oil in low speed and high load applications to prevent quick entry into boundary conditions. Engines see all three stages, so the oil has to meet all three needs. Engine bearings need an oil heavy enough to carry the load, but also light enough to keep them cool. Too much or too little viscosity can cause bearing failure. Since pistons change direction every stroke, they are constantly speeding up and slowing down. This oscillation between full film and boundary film requires friction modifiers to keep the pistons and the piston rings happy. Finally, your valve train operates in boundary condition, moving at half crankshaft speed, camshaft seat, lower speeds, and higher loads than any other engine part. So it's no surprise that camshafts really need zinc to keep them happy. Okay, so what does all this mean? First, choose an oil based on your application. Highly loaded valve trains need oil with more zinc. Second, work to improve surface finish. Smoother surfaces can carry greater loads with less friction. They also allow it for the use of lower viscosity oils, which frees up horsepower. This applies to gears and transmissions as well as engines. Thanks for your time. Stay tuned for future installments in the Lubrication Fundamental Series from Joe Gibbs Driven.